Hello friends, how is it going? It's me, Betty Jean. It is time for my monthly favorites video. These are all the things that I was loving in the month of January. I have a very random assortment of things. I have makeup, uh, movies, books, food, general life things. I have quite the plethora and I'm excited to share them with you. I can't believe January is coming to an end already. It happened so, so fast. I feel like it was such a blur, but it was a good month and I'm, I'm excited to just see where the rest of this year goes. I always love doing these videos, just chatting about the, the assortment of things I was loving. And on the flip side, I love hearing what your favorites were. So please let me know what your favorites have been for the month of January as well. Before we get into the favorites video, I did of course film this look. It should already be up on my Instagram and YouTube shorts by the time this video goes up. And as far as my accessories today go, this is just an old choker. I don't know where it's from. These earrings are Spooky Doodle Club and these rings are from Regal Rose. So yeah, without further ado, let's just hop in. I don't want to babble too much in this intro because I think we're going to be talking about favorite things for a while. <laughs> Let's get the best favorite out of the way first. We got our new little kitten at the very end of December and we just love her so much. <laughs> Wanda, what are you doing? She has been the light of our lives. She has been the best little addition. She's crazy and funny and so, so sweet. <laughs> she loves to climb. She loves to participate in all the activities. She is the sweetest little bean and we love little Wanda so incredibly much. So she is of course the ultimate favorites of the month and she will continue to be the favorite forever. You know what? I'm just gonna let her climb. I'm just gonna let her explore. She doesn't spend too much time in here, not by choice. She just doesn't really come up here very much. She usually likes to be where we're at when we're downstairs. So we're just gonna let her climb, explore do all the things, enjoy. But let's move on next into makeup. I feel like makeup is always a good place to kind of start these videos. Um, I don't have the biggest pile, but I do have some things that really, really stood out to me. First being my new favorite setting powder of all time. Like literally in my entire existence of wearing makeup, this is the ultimate favorite. It's the e.l.f. Halo Glow Loose Setting Powder. This is just so beautiful. I bought this just on a whim because I've been liking the Halo Glow line a lot and I feel like I still just didn't have like my new favorite setting powder ever. So I bought this one and I am loving it. I feel like it gives such a beautiful like satin radiance to the skin. It doesn't look like highlighty glowy, but it just looks very radiant, which I personally love. I do not like a powder that's so flat and mattifying. I have normal to dry skin just for reference. Um, so I don't like need mattifying. Um, and I just love something like this. It doesn't make my normal to dry skin look drier. If anything, it makes it look a little more lively. I feel like it's sets down really well with just a small amount. This is such a perfect, wonderful, amazing setting powder. I literally cannot get enough. She's just so stinking cute, I cannot take it. Next, ColourPop released the collaboration with Twilight, and I mean the entire entity. I just, I love Twilight. I thought that was such a cool collaboration, but my standout most favorite part of the collection was the highlighters for sure. We have two shades here. We have Vampire Skin. It's just a very like icy, cool, kind of situation. It's so, so, so pretty. And then the other one is Meadow. It's actually what I'm wearing as my face highlight today. I feel like it also has a really pretty kind of pearly iridescent, but this one definitely leans more like purple pink as you can see there. It's so pretty. I really, really like the Super Shock highlighters. I've been using them for years and years. Flexitarian has remained a favorite in my collection since the beginning of time. And I'm really happy to add these to my collection as well. I'm going to continue reaching for these for quite a while, I have a feeling. They are top tier amazing. Now, eyeshadow palettes. I feel like I've already tried so many great eyeshadow palettes and the year has just begun. So I tried to narrow it down to the three that I think I'm liking the most at the moment. First being the Dreamer from Unearthly, which might be kind of a surprise because it does lean a little bit more neutral-ish. It's very like smoky purples, mauve neutrals kind of vibes, um, but it's very, very beautiful. I love this a lot. I took this when we went on our trip to Boston um, earlier in the month. I just think this is so beautiful. The shimmers are so sparkly and shifty on the lids. The mattes are so rich and pigmented, and I just Love it, Unearthly has been absolutely killing it lately, and this one makes me really, really happy. And of course, I feel like I can't not shout out the new Bella Beauty Bar palettes. These just released. Um, I believe they might be on pre-order now because they sold out really fast. Um, but the first is the Ultraviolet in collaboration with Deandra Nicole. It's what I'm wearing today, actually. It's so beautiful. Like, if you need purple magic, this is the one for you. Dare I say this might be, like, the ultimate purple palette. 
The shimmers are just incredible. They're so shifty and sparkly and the mattes are so rich and pigmented. I love how deep this gets. And I love that we have kind of a good variation here from things that are a little more fuchsia-y into very just rich, very ultraviolet, if you will, shades. It's so gorgeous. And the Dead Roses palette, this one makes me so happy as well. It's beautiful. I love this whole theming. I think it's such a cool like Valentine's or anti-Valentine's kind of vibe, depending on how you view it. Um, I love a pink, purple, red color story. I think this is so, so beautiful. I can definitely see this being a major go-to going into February with Valentine's Day and stuff. I think it's gorgeous. Again, the shimmers are just so shifty and beautiful and the mattes are so pigmented. I love this. I love all three of these. I've done videos with all three of them. You can check my channel. You can check my Instagram and YouTube shorts for other looks as well. I've done many a thing with those palettes at this point and I'm loving them. Let's see. What category do I want to drift into next? I guess maybe we can talk about some food. <laughs> um, they might be available all year round, but I personally only really see them around this time of year leading into Valentine's Day. But the Lint Truffles, um, they have flavors that I'm obsessed with this time of year. First being the Strawberries and Cream. I've been buying it around this time of year every year the last few years, and they are so good. They're just very like silky strawberries and cream flavor. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like a creamy, yummy, strawberry burst of loveliness. It is so good, especially if you like strawberry, obviously. If you don't like strawberry, you'd hate them. But they are so, so delicious. I just love the silkiness. It is so delightful. And then this year, I also discovered they have a dark chocolate strawberry. I don't know if it's new or if it's just new to me, but either way, it's amazing. We have a beautiful dark chocolate outside with a yummy, rich strawberry inside. Again, it's silky, it's smooth, it's amazing, and everything that I want right now. I'm just so strawberry obsessed when we get to like the beginning quarter of the year. It's my favorite flavor. <laughs> Technically have some downstairs still, like they're filling my candy jars, but I didn't want to just bring like individual small truffles. I figured showing the package would be more accessible. But another thing that I, I technically don't have because I'm out of them, um, I love the Alani new energy drinks. They're one of my favorite energy drink brands because they don't make me feel jittery. Um, that and Celsius are pretty much the only ones I can really drink usually. Um, and I've been like back on my Alani new kick. I feel like it's what I'm craving the most right now. Like I want that more than I want coffee. But they have a kiwi guava flavor that I'd never tried before. And it is so delightful. It is by far my favorite flavor they've ever done. Arctic White is very high up there still, but Kiwi Guava is so just juicy and delicious. It is so good. I feel like I rarely see it in stores because I, I imagine it sells out pretty quick. I imagine a lot of people probably feel the same as me, but anytime I see it, I snag it and I love it. It is so unbelievably tasty. I just love how juicy it tastes. It is so, so, so good. I love that flavor, but really just that, that Alani new drink brand in general. So good, but that flavor, top tier. If you ever see it, please try it. I guess kind of on the subject of food, but going into books a little bit, um, I wanted to shout out this cookbook that one of my clients gave me for Christmas. It's the America's Test Kitchen Bowls Cookbook. This is so so, so good. And it was just such funny timing because that morning before I saw her in my salon, I was talking to Zane about like, oh, we need to get groceries. Like, what do you think about just doing various bowls this week? Like stuff like that. He's like, yeah, yeah, it sounds great. And then I go to work and she gives me this cookbook. I'm like, how did you know? Like, how were you this in sync with me that you knew I needed a bowls cookbook? <laughs> this is so good. We've made I think three or four recipes so far. I've only tabbed one of them. I'm going to try to go through and keep tabs on all the ones we've tried and like my little notes on like how much we liked it so we can revisit them. Um, the first one we did was like this Mexican street corn chowder. We just used soy chorizo instead of real chorizo because we don't eat meat. This was so unbelievably tasty. It was so, so good. We made another one fairly recently. Let me find it. It was like a black bean soup. Uh, yes, it was this one, this black bean soup. So unbelievably good, especially if you top it with like some sour cream and like tortilla chips. It was so good. It's like taco night, but in a soup. I mean, I guess the Mexican street corn chowder was the same and we love like Mexican food. So both of these have hit so, so well. We made this salad bowl the other day, this one actually. This fatouche, I might be saying that wrong, salad bowl. It was so good. Tahini sauce like mixture that it had us make was so yummy and I just loved all the different textures. It was so good. I'm loving this bowl. We've been trying to make one recipe from it a week roughly and it's been going really well. Like so far we've been so impressed and I've never really actively used a cookbook before. I usually just like Google recipes if I'm looking for something but what I'm finding I'm really liking about this is like 
not only is this curated to this specific thing, and I feel like they're all probably going to taste good because they're in the same book, but I don't know, it like narrows down my options a little bit. Like there's still like so many options in here. There's like noodle bowls, salad bowls, soup bowls, all kinds of bowls, <laughs> um, but it like narrows down my options. So I don't just have like an unlimited op amount of options on the internet. I have like a set amount to kind of look through and choose from. And this has just been so fun. And now I want to try more uh, America's Test Kitchen cookbooks because this is going so well so far. I'm not going to buy another one right now. I want to like definitely get through a lot of these so far before I like buy a whole other cookbook. But I'm loving that. Like it's probably weird to be raving about a cookbook, but if you've never really delved into cookbooks, maybe you should because it's really fun. <laughs> these recipes are all really quick. They're really easy. They're really tasty. And I'm just really excited. And we eat like bowl type food a lot. Like we'll have like burrito bowls or just like quinoa veggie bowls or various bowls. So this is like perfect for us. I love it. <laughs> Continuing on with books. Usually I talk about my like five star read of the month for my favorites video because I don't want to be like too redundant in talking about like books here and then in my upcoming reading wrap up. I don't want it to just be same old repetitive. I technically haven't read a five star book yet this month. I've read nothing but good books this month, but none of them were giving me that five star feeling. But I figured I would still just shout out like my two favorite universes that I'm currently in. Um, one being I'm chucking away at the Throne of Glass series. I read Crown of Midnight and Air of Fire in this month. And as soon as I finish the book I'm currently reading, I'm gonna dive into Queen of Shadows and I'm so excited. I have a strong feeling Queen of Shadows might be a five star because everyone seems to say that one and the last one are their favorite. So I'm really, really excited, but I loved these books. Like definitely it's like a 4.5 star series for me so far. They're so good. The world is so immersive. The characters are so good. There's so many characters in this story. Um, I'm loving it. I'm just loving to see where everything is going. I don't want to talk too many specifics because I don't want to give spoilers, um, but I'm loving this series. I'm about halfway done right now. I have four more books to go and I'm very excited. I am so excited to dive into Queen of Shadows. I'm going to be attacking the tandem read in the month of February. I don't know if I'll also get to the last one, Kingdom of Ash or not, but that'll at the very least be in March. And I'm just so excited. It's such a good world and I am absolutely loving it. Like I loved Akatar, and I'm also really loving this one. Like I've already had people asking me like, which one do I prefer? And I feel like I can't really give an answer yet because I'm only halfway through this series, but it's hard for me to even compare them because they're so different. Like Akatar is very much like romantic, fey realm kind of vibes. Whereas this is very like, she's an assassin. And then there's like, it's a lot darker and there's more fighting involved. Like it's such a different vibe. Like it's not as heavy on the romance as like Akatar is. So it just depends on what you're feeling. I just know that I loved Akatar and I'm loving this one. And I'm really excited to eventually dive into Crescent City in the future. Um, it's just, it's fun. And I'm really, really enjoying it. And then next that I don't like have, so I'll just put a, a generic picture up on the screen is I dove headfirst into the Hunger Games universe for the first time ever this month and I, Loved it. I'd never read the books. I'd never watched the movies. And I accomplished all of that this month. I was going to read all the books and then watch all the movies, but I ended up doing it like story by story. So I read Hunger Games, watched Hunger Games, read Catching Fire, watched Catching Fire, and then so on and so forth with Mockingjay and then the two Mockingjay movies. I um, actually just finished Mockingjay Part 2 last night. And I freaking love this universe. It was so cool, so dystopian and there's like a love triangle going on but then there's like this feeling of impending doom like the world is actually ending how are we going to get out of this situation it was so cool and I'm so sad that I was so late to the train but I'm happy to finally be here and be a part of this universe because I feel like it deserves more hype like why do more people not still obsess over Hunger Games I feel like it did get a resurgence with Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes which I mean, the fact that that movie even came out and sparked people's interest again is what prompted me to go back and finally take on the Hunger Games trilogy. Um, so I'm so glad I did, but I feel like more people need to be obsessed with Hunger Games. It was so freaking good. I loved it. I am going to be going through Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, the book and the movie next month, and I'm so excited. It'll be available on my Libby app any day now, and I cannot wait. It's going to be so good. I'm so excited to just go back in time and get kind of this like prequel knowledge of everything that like happened before like well before everything in the trilogy. Like I'm so excited for it. And I just love that the movie adaptations were so good. Like I loved reading them like book, movie, book, movie, because I feel like everything 
like correlated so well. There were only minor differences, but for the most part, it was like the exact same story. And it was just such a great book to movie adaptation. I loved it so much. On the topic of movies, the new Mean Girls movie musical is so good. <laughs> I cannot get enough. I want to start by saying I feel like it's not being advertised properly or wasn't in the beginning. I don't know if it's changed now because I feel like a lot of people don't really understand what it is. So there's the original Mean Girls movie that came out forever ago. I don't even know when. When did it come out? Hey Siri, when did Mean Girls come out? 2004? 20 years ago. That's crazy. Uh, so 20 years ago, Mean Girls came out. I was obsessed with it back in like middle school, high school, adulthood. Ever since I saw it, I've been obsessed with it. So the original movie came out 20 years ago. Fast forward quite a few years, uh, Broadway came out with like a Mean Girls musical production for Broadway. When did that come out? Hey Siri, when did the Mean Girls Broadway start? Ah, 2018, okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> so we want a good chunk of time. So this is the movie adaptation of that Broadway musical, which was based on the original movie. So this is not like a remake. It's not a sequel. Like it's not trying to remake the original. It's not trying to be a sequel to the original. It's just like the campy musical version of the original. Like, yeah, there's different characters as far as like the casting goes. Like the characters are the same, but the cast is different, obviously. Um, but it's just, it's fun. It's campy. It's silly. It plays off of jokes from the original movie. I feel like you have to love the original and you also have to love musicals to love this one. I loved it so much. I literally cannot stop listening to the soundtrack. Um, Renee Rapp is my new obsession. She is who plays Regina both in the movie and on Broadway. Um, I, I'm obsessed. We're actually going again for the second time tomorrow because my in-laws were down to see it. And I was like, I want to go again. So we should all go. <laughs> I loved it. Once it comes on streaming, it's going to be like one of my go-to comfort movies. It was so fun, like such a fun time. So just goofy and campy. And I loved every second of it. It's my new personality. <laughs> we got our Peloton finally. I know I shouted out the Peloton app in last month's favorites because we didn't have the actual Peloton machine yet. We just had the app to use. And I was loving the app and I still am. Like I love doing my Pilates workouts and stuff so, so much. But now we have the actual Peloton. We got the I think the bike plus is what it's called. So it has the big rotating screen, which is great because then I can just like do my other workouts on that screen. I don't have to use my iPad, um, but I love it. I'm loving the cycling classes. It was my first time doing any sort of spin class ever this month and it hurts your butt real bad at first. I did buy a padded bike seat cover and I bought padded bike shorts because it certainly hurts at first. You do get used to it. I feel like I'm already getting quite used to it, um, but I love it. I've been doing a cycling class like I guess on average two to three times a week because I also do kickboxing twice a week and then I'll usually try to do at least one Pilates class a week. Now that I have the cycling, I've kind of slowed down on that and I've kind of been focusing more on the cycling because I'm loving it. My favorite instructor so far is Allie Love, but I gotta say, she's also the only instructor I've used. So I feel like I jumped right into her classes and now I'm obsessed and I don't really wanna try anyone else, but I know I need to. So if you use the Peloton, let me know who your favorite like cycle instructors are so I know who else to try out. Um, Allie Love is just so great. She's so cute. And I feel like I just love the way she communicates and she has some Taylor Swift classes that are super fun. Um, I'm loving it. It's so much fun. I feel like I just have a blast doing it. Like it's hard work, but I'm also just like genuinely enjoying myself. I feel so good afterwards and I'm just so glad we got the Peloton. It's been such a fun investment so far. We ended up going with the rental option. So we can either choose to just pay it off whenever we want, or we can send it back if we decide we don't want it anymore. Um, and that feels very safe because I didn't know how we would feel about it. Zane's been enjoying it as well, um, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it way more than I thought I was going to. I wasn't sure how much I would love cycling classes, but they are so fun. I feel like I have no choice but to shout out the Caraway pots and pans set that we found at Marshall's. I still can't believe we found such a steal of a deal. Um, we have them physically. I just don't feel like carrying all those pots and pans upstairs. So here's a picture of the set that we got. Um, I still can't believe it. We stumbled into Marshall's and the set that I've dreamt of having for ever since I discovered the Caraway brand in the color that I wanted, the black with the gold accents, was just there. This set usually runs for like, I think $700 and we found it for $3.99 and it was so good. I can't believe we saved a few hundred dollars on it. And even though that was still like kind of painful to spend, I wasn't expecting to spend that. Um, 
it's been so worth it. We love them. They are so beautifully nonstick and they work so well. They're so big. We've been cooking in them like every single day and they're so easy to use. You don't need high heat. It's actually recommended you don't use high heat because you need they conduct heat so well you don't need to like overdo it. Um, but they're so beautiful. I love them so much. The only problem now is I want some more of the pans from this line, but they're so expensive. So I'm just holding out hope that I just stumble upon more in like TJ Maxx and Marshalls or maybe wait for a sale or something. Cause I'd like to get some of the smaller pots and pans cause these ones are all really big, um, which is very useful, but I, I would like to maybe get some smaller ones eventually. But I might just have to wait and see if they have like major sales or something to make it more worth it. Cause I still don't know if I could justify paying full price for these cause it's so expensive, but for the, the super discounted rates, then we can discuss it. <laughs> and these are pots and pans that we will have for literally probably the rest of our lives as long as we take good care of them. So I'm very excited about it. That was such an unexpected find. I think we found them on like New Year's Day and what a great start to the year. <laughs> Last but not least, I wanted to shout out some book YouTubers that I've been obsessed with watching. I mostly watch book YouTube right now. <laughs> it's just my favorite thing to put on is background noise. So I figured I would shout out the three that I've been loving the most right now. One is Larry. I'm just gonna kind of scroll. I'll have all of these creators linked down below. Um, but she's just so fun. I like her energy. She's kind of weird and kooky and kind of scatterbrained, but I mean all of that in the best way. Like she's just like weird and silly and I love the way she talks about books and she's just a comfort to watch and I've really, really been enjoying her. I think I discovered her at the tail end of December, but I've really, really been diving into her videos this month. I've also really been enjoying Chandler Ainsley. She's such a cutie. She really likes romance books, which I also love romance books. So I've been enjoying, as you can see, I still have lots of videos to watch. She's a recent discovery. I only discovered her, I think halfway through this month, but I've really been enjoying her. I really like the way she speaks. She's very, kind of calm and just like so well-spoken and very calming to listen to. I, I feel like I said the word calm too many times, but she's just cozy to listen to. I enjoy her a lot. She's super, super cute. And last is the book Leo. She is so cute. She's from, I think the Netherlands, if I'm not mistaken. And I just love the way she talks about books. She has a lot of fun, like takes on different things, like a lot of more kind of discussion videos about like, book related topics, like about just different genres in general or about people hating on book talkers or kind of like theorizing why certain book genres do well for certain things. Like she does very more, almost like video essay style videos if I had to like put it into words. Like she also still just talks about books in general, but I really like her kind of just thought process and talking about just overall like concepts and things like that. It's, it's really cool to listen to. Um, I've really been enjoying those creators. I think they're really fun to just throw on as background noise while I'm getting ready for work or just hanging out around the house or eating food. I just love them. They're bringing me a lot of joy this month and I've been loving it. So yeah, I think that might be the end of my list here. Yeah, I think we talked about everything that I wrote down. So Thank you for watching my favorites video. I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you love any of the things that I mentioned? Do you want any of these things? And again, I would love to hear your favorites from the month of January, whether it's a food you ate, a makeup item you tried, an activity you did. I would love to know what your favorites were. If you made it to the end of this video, leave your current favorite emoji. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And if you're not already, you can follow me over on Instagram. I'm Batty Bean there as well. You can also subscribe. I'm posting most days over here. You can also join my channel memberships. Link to sign up will be down below. You'll get fun little perks, including a members only video once a month. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.